Hello again, welcome back. I hope you're all doing amazingly and I'm here this weekend with a video for you. This article was so amazing to read and I wanted to share it with you. So we're going to jump straight into this. But before we do, welcome. If you're here for the first time, thank you for tuning in and I hope you click that subscribe button and join the fam. So let's get straight into this. This is about Megan's wedding dress and you're going to learn so much about the behind the scenes that went into Megan's choice. As we all know, uh, Megan chose quite an iconic look with a lot of clean lines and we're going to get straight into that. So courtesy of VanityFair.com, the article says, on May 19th, 2018, the royal nuptials of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex made history and broke traditions with the bride Meghan's wedding dress almost serving as an allegory. An estimated 1.9 billion people tuned in to watch Prince Harry and Meghan say their I do's, while 600 guests including Serena Williams, Idris Elba, David and Victoria Beckham and the cast of Suits filled Windsor Castle's St. George's Chapel. British Gospel Ensemble, the Kingdom Choir sang Ben E. King's Stand By Me as Michael Curry, the first black presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, quoted Martin Luther King Jr. in his powerful sermon. In Windsor, around 100,000 enthusiastic supporters turned out in person to catch a glimpse of the festivities. There was something about the gown that really captured the new journey that the Sussexes were going to be on, says Megan's wedding dress designer, Claire Waite Keller. Then artistic director of Givenchy and the first woman to hold the role went on to say, quote, the fact that this was a very different wedding and ceremony to any other royal event in that chapel or any royal weddings previously, end quote. Designing Meghan's wedding dress, estimated to cost $265,000 and paid for by the former actress, entailed 3,900 hours of design for the veil, eight fittings, and five months of clandestine communication. It all started out in a way quite relaxed, Wait Keller said. Quote, we just talked a lot about her personal style, end quote. Classic gowns in old Hollywood fare provided reference points for the actor turned producer. Quote, she'd always loved Audrey Hepburn, end quote. Claire said, the silver screen legend's bateau neck wedding dress designed by Hubert de Givenchy for the 1957 Funny Face presents a through line to Meghan's open neckline. Quote, a small rounded neat shoulder, end quote, and a sculptural silhouette, all signatures of the French fashion house. Individualistic style from American royalty also provided inspiration. Quote, both of us loved Caroline Bassett Kennedy and the fact that she surprised everyone with the simplicity of what she wore for her 1996 wedding, end quote. Claire went on to say, back in 2016, Meghan did laud the late fashion icon's bias cut dress by Narciso Rodriguez for Ceruti as everything goes, in quotes. The Sussexes also looked to Hollywood to document the event historically through the official royal portraits. They chose British fashion and celebrity photographer Alexei Lubormiski, who lensed the likes of Beyonce for Harper's Bazaar UK and Angelina Jolie for American Elle. Early on, Alexei studied ancestral wedding photographs with the couple. Quote, the only reference that they gave me was to try and not photograph the portraits too uniformly. I didn't want it to look like a school photo or a regimental military picture, end quote, said Alexei, who then pivoted to the contemporary examples. Quote, I started to get them to look at group photos from more fashion and portraiture sources. A lot of Vanity Fair, actually. A lot of Annie Lebovitz, obviously, because she is the queen of group photos, end quote. Quote, we talked a lot about what Meghan really felt represented her modern interpretation of the royal role, end quote, Claire said. 
She went on to say, quote, she wanted to bring some simplicity and just timeless elegance, not overly feminine, but not really minimal either. That effortless American style where it just feels really fresh and personal. But it's not overwhelming. It's not specific to any particular decade, end quote. So they also went on to talk about how Meghan had innovated by selecting a contemporary fashion house while also uplifting a British woman designer, as also Catherine did. But Meghan's vision diverged from Kate's lace wedding dress by Sarah Burton for Alexander McQueen, as well as Princess Diana's volume and ruffles by David and Elizabeth Emmanuel. Quote, Meghan's gown stands out by departing from the usual royal wedding dress style. It's quite unique that there is no lace, embroidery, or any decorations, end quote, observes Savannah College of Art and Design professor Sarah Collins. The fashion scholar also thinks that the minimalist design characterizes traits of the United States, where the Sussexes now reside as non-working royals, quote, it's reflective of American fashion, which has always been more practical and less adorned than European fashions. Collins says, quote, American fashion has traditionally followed the puritanical austerity of American beginnings where practicality and function are more important than aesthetics, end quote. So for my Americans in the comment section, let me know if that truly embodies American fashion. So the article goes on to say, Wade Keller and Meghan collaborated in determining the pure white sheen to evoke modernity, in quotes, per a Kensington Palace statement. The designer then scarred fabric mills across Europe to develop a double bonded silk caddy for a soft matte but gracefully luminous effect. Six meticulously placed seams constructed the gown's contoured silhouette, which culminates at the back of Meghan's wedding dress into a majestic 16-foot-long train intensified with a triple silk organza underskirt, the near-off-the-shoulder neckline, and three-quarter-length sleeves feels contemporary and progressive while respecting tradition. Quote, There was that sense of playfulness and modernity and doing things in a different way. And I really feel that for the dress particularly, that sense of it could be something that really represented her, her spirit, her modernity, and the freshness, and the cleanness, end quote, Claire Waite Keller said. Megan's first wedding dress also proved ideal for Lou Burmiski's photography style, which highlights the emotion and spontaneity of subject or occasion, especially in the viral photo of the newlyweds taking a blissful breather on the steps of Windsor Castle's Rose Garden. Megan's gown drapes effortlessly and flawlessly as she smiles off into the distance with a grinning Prince Harry's arm around her shoulder. She later changed into a Stella McCartney halter gown for a private reception hosted by her father-in-law, now King Charles III. So Lubomirsky goes on to talk about this concerning his photos that when you're looking at them, quote, you're not looking at the precise beauty of the dress as a sculpture, you're looking at it in conjunction with the person wearing it, end quote. So they also talk about how she made a grand entrance and how Meghan broke general wedding convention by beginning her walk down the aisle on her own. Then King Charles joined Meghan halfway to accompany her to the altar. Of course, the solo stride wasn't originally planned, as Thomas Markle decided not to attend just days before. But Meghan's wedding dress was ready to support the momentous entrance which exemplified the new royal forging her own path. Claire Waite said, quote, just at the very front, you can see the little points of her shoes. It's quite a 60s Givenchy detail, end quote. She also went on to say, quote, so it just meant there was never any hesitation of her ever tripping or getting caught or anything. Her feet were always free at the front, end quote. So this was about the gown's slightly raised hemline, providing a peek at Meghan's silk duchess satin couture heels and flexibility for bold strides. To honor her then royal duties, Meghan's 16-foot silk tulle veil was hand-embroidered with silk and organza flora distinctive of all 53 countries of the Commonwealth. 
For example, the tropical orchid for Kenya, whoop whoop my home, <laughs> and jasmine for Pakistan and a Tudor rose for England. Meghan paid homage to her home state and the royal family with two flowers, the California poppy and the Windsor sweet, which blooms on Kensington Palace grounds. So Clara said this quote, Megan felt like she was bringing an element of each of those countries down the aisle with her so that her new role and that bridge to the new role was captured in what she was wearing, end quote. She went on to say, quote, for both of us, we felt it was a really beautiful signature. And I think even Prince Harry was just thrilled at the idea that we really tried to capture something for everyone in that service, end quote. My heart is so warmed by that, knowing that in that detail that I've just read to you right now, my country was represented in, you know, the flora of her tulle veil as she went down the aisle. So heartwarming, so sweet. Okay, moving on. So the article goes on to say, to symbolize love and charity, crops of wheat were intricately blended into the floral motif at the front of the veil, which was secured with Queen Mary's diamond and platinum bandeau tiara. And an interesting note here, because we all know that Meghan was so splendid on her wedding day, wearing the tiara that was finally chosen for her. It has been quite fascinating to learn that the Spencers had also offered Meghan to wear their own quite famous tiara that Prince Harry's mother, Diana, had worn on her own wedding. It always makes me wonder in that what if, what if Meghan had worn it and you know, how would she have looked in that as well? And it has also highlighted the special love that has been shown from Prince Harry's maternal side with his family just wrapping their arms around Meghan and even offering her that very special tiara for her day. So share your thoughts on that as well. And would you have liked in some alternate parallel timeline for Megan to have worn it? Or do you think there will be one day, perhaps there might be an occasion where uh, maybe Prince Harry would be called upon to attend with Megan and maybe she might get a chance to wear it? Share your thoughts on that in the comment section below. So the Givenchy Atelier workers in Paris sewed for hundreds of hours and washed their hands every 30 minutes to ensure that the threads and tulle remained immaculate, end quote. So the groom's father, a staunch supporter of British handcraftsmanship and artisan traditions, was also moved by the gesture. Quote, King Charles was just in awe of the dress and the veil embroidery, and he asked me about it while we were waiting inside the nave, end quote. Wait Keller said, she went on to say, quote, he was really, really interested actually in all the different motifs and floral representations, end quote. So they also talk about something blue. So the Duchess put in a creative twist on her something blue after dismissing a garter or something like that, Claire explained. So Meghan snipped a piece of fabric from the dress she wore on her first date with Prince Harry. We basically sewed it into the hem of the wedding dress so that she was the only one who knew it was there. It was a little blue check, weight color said, dropping a significant clue about the Sussex's origin story. And for social media sleuths to scour the way back machine, it was a perfect personal memento that was secretly hidden inside the dress, end quote. So it's wonderful. I don't want to read the whole article because I want to encourage you to go over to Vanity Fair and read some of it for yourself. But those were the, some of the highlights for me. They also talked about the bridesmaids or the flower girls uh, at wedding dresses as well that coordinated with Megan uh, in that white, crisp, white, hot couture. So this was just so fascinating to learn about the behind the scenes and all that went into the thought of her dress. It really does show that there was quite a lot of thought put into all the details of her dress with a lot of symbolism and of course very moving gestures for her to have the commonwealth represented with her on her veil as well it's a testament to i think just the amount of grace upon megan as she was planning her wedding so much was going on behind the scenes and you know you could still see that she had time to be thoughtful about everything and take in that day and truly not let it just be a big blur but you could tell that even on the day that her and prince harry made it 
a point to to truly take it in and appreciate the moment and all that was going on around them so how wonderful share with me your standouts about this article in the comment section below and what you loved about megan's dress what was your favorite thing about megan's dress share that and i love it truly an iconic look that is not pinned down to any decade we applaud her on the choice of her dress it will be a standout for years to come so thank you all for watching and as always before we log off i'd like to thank all who support this channel and before i do kindly i'd encourage you all we are growing this channel over on twitter as well or x kindly drop a follow over there links will be appearing here i look forward to seeing you on there and now a special thank you to all who support this channel financially to all my patreon paypal and membership supporters i'd like to give a very heartfelt thank you and i'd like to shout out a couple of you here by name a very special thank you as well to you, Helene Gruen. I appreciate you for your love and your engagement and your comments. Thank you for your kindness and love and generosity towards my channel. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you as well to Bonnie who goes by the handle B10POW. Thank you for all the ways that you've chosen to support this channel throughout the years. You've been such a faithful supporter and your love means so much to me. I value you and appreciate you. Thank you as well for being a channel moderator here. Thank you as well to those who gave through Super Thanks. Thank you to Lydia Washington who as well is one of the channel moderators here. Thank you for all the ways you engage on this channel. You mean so much to me and I love you and I'm always praying for you. Thank you as well to those who gave during the last live. Thank you to Black Queen. Thank you for your tremendous generosity. It means so much to me. I love and appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you as well to you who goes by the handle Saint Mary of Truth. Thank you so very much for that kindness you've shown towards my channel. I truly appreciate that. Once again, thank you to all who support this channel financially and to all who like, comment, and share. It means so much. And if you like this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It truly does help out the channel. And share your comments on this in the comment section below. Once again, follow this channel on Twitter or X for more posts. I would love to see you on there. I love you all. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a blessed one.